Today, I want to talk a little bit about toxicity and specifically point something out. Now, many of you guys have been watching cooking videos. You've watched many of the videos, read the articles we've done. And I got a question recently from somebody who was watching a video and they said, hey, where's that? Where's your microwave? You'll notice here, we've been doing this, there's a big hole here in my kitchen where I never had a microwave installed. The reason is microwaves give off radiation. And I actually haven't used a microwave now for probably a good, eh, I'd say at least seven or eight years, if not longer, because I started learning of the damaging effects of low dose radiation over time. I even had a point where one time in my life I had roommates who came in, used the microwave and had it taken out. And so anyways, it's one of these things where I just, I know microwaves are terrible for you, so I don't use them at all. Um, and I wanna read a quick article here uh, by a guy named J.R. Goldsmith, and he did some medical research on radiation that comes from cell phones and from microwaves. Here's what he found. He said, we found four effects on, in multiple studies, not just one, multiple studies on the effects of radiation from microwaves and from cell phones. He said, the effects were report reported in multiple studies that we found increased spontaneous abortion, shifts in red and white blood cell counts, increased somatic mutation in lymphocytes, and increased childhood cancers. And so anyways, we're finding, we found over time that radiation can cause cancer. Now, I'm not telling you that using the microwave one time is going to cause cancer. Again, there's no research saying that. But again, there is research and evidence showing that small amounts over time, and that's the way toxicity works. Typically, it's not one big exposure we get. It's the bucket effect. Your body's like a bucket. You fill it with radiation over time and find, or other toxic chemicals, and one day, bam, you're, it really affects your body in a major way. And so I know I try and stay away from everything because, again, a little bit at a time isn't a big deal, but a little bit added up over a long period of time can affect your body in a really negative manner. And so number one, I don't use a microwave. I have a lot of people say, well, what do you do? I use a stove. <laughs> you know, if you're cooking something like oatmeal, it may take five minutes versus one minute, but again, it's worth taking the time to actually cook your food. Now, a good replacement for a microwave is getting a convection oven. We have ovens now where we have microwave-like smaller ovens that fit where a microwave would, and they heat through air rather than radiation. And it takes twice as long, two minutes rather than one, if you're heating something up, but it's well worth getting a convection oven as a replacement. So again, there are easy replacements there. I don't use a microwave at all. Last thing here, looking at cell phones. Now, I still talk on my phone pretty frequently, uh, but what I do is I don't have it right next to my head, okay? What I do is I place it somewhere away from me, and then I actually use a headphone set. And most headphones today actually have an area you can talk into. And so this is what I do to reduce my, my radiation exposure. So we can't go through life without having any exposure to everything. I mean, even things from computer screens, a lot of these things give off some low dose radiation. Microwaves are much higher than most things. But again, reduce your exposure over time for you, especially for your kids. So get headphones, get a convection oven. Because again, you look at the stats today, the evidence is mounting that radiation is dangerous. Another place you want to stay away from it is airport scanners. So here are some before and after pictures of a science project. And I quote, below is a science fair project that my granddaughter did for 2006. Uh, in it, she took filtered water and divided it into two parts. The first part she heated to boiling in a pan on a stove, and the second part she heated uh, to boiling in a microwave. Another thing that modern society has brought us is the microwave oven. And so if cooking by itself doesn't necessarily kill, prana, kill the prana, what about microwaves? Cooking over a slow, lower heat over a longer period of time allows us to assimilate the prana. Microwaves cook violently in a very short period of time, and they cook the food from the inside out. And the way they do it, what they do is they vibrate. They actually, it's more than vibrate, they explode the molecules in the food against one another with such tremendous force that it generates such friction that it cooks it from the inside out. I personally don't own a microwave, but if you buy an oven, in the instruction book, they say after cooking the food, let it sit for a minute or two before eating it. And they don't say why. And common sense would say, oh, it's too hot. And that's part that's of it. Mm -hmm. The other factor is when those molecules of food are exploding into one another, it damages the molecules and you get free radicals. And after a couple of minutes, many of those free radicals find their way back and become paired. And so they don't do as damage. Free radicals have been implicated in the cause of all the degenerative changes, the degenerative diseases in the, in the body. So uh, I don't recommend <laughs> Microwave cooking. Ayurveda recommends cooking over a fire, preferably wood. You know, not, that's not very practical, so a gas fire is useful. Uh, microwave um, is the least useful because of the damage. You know, once or twice, not really, you know, not going to do much damage. But no, over a year and a year out, it's going to destroy the prana. The person's going to become depleted, and it'll show up physically in early degenerative changes. It'll show up mentally because the prana is a life force and the mind won't be nourished by the soma 
that's in the food. And so we'll tend to dry up even more than we do in old age and produce psychological anxiety and worry and fear, uh, insomnia, those type of conditions. So you really want to avoid a microwave as much as possible. Hi, I'm Holly Mannion from the Green Team and the Radiation Roulette blog. I'm in the kitchen and I'd like to tell you a little bit about your microwave. First of all, I have my radio frequency meter with me. I have it in the on position. I have a microwave here and some food in it. I'm going to close the microwave and watch what happens. I should say, listen to what happens. Wow, that's a lot of radiation leaking. And it's still leaking out this far. I want to turn it off before I get cooked as well as the food in the oven. Anyway, the best advice I can give you is to get rid of the microwave oven. Every microwave oven leaks electric magnetic radiation, harms food, and converts food cooked in it to dangerous organ toxic and carcinogenic products. Microwave cooking is not natural, nor healthy, and is far more dangerous to the human body than you could imagine. The human body cannot metabolize the unknown byproducts created in microwave foods. And the effects of microwave food byproducts are residual within the human body. Cooking by microwaves begins with the cells and molecules where water is present and where energy is transformed into frictional heat. When you turn the microwave on, the vibration is so intense that the structures of the molecules are ripped apart and forcefully deformed. This violent action causes a change in the chemical makeup of food and your food becomes impaired in quality. Minerals, vitamins, and nutrients of all microwave food is reduced or altered so that the human body gets little or no benefit. Minerals, vegetables, and are altered into cancerous free radicals. Again, my best advice is get rid of your microwave oven. It just takes a little bit more time to heat your food up in a standard oven, and at least then you know that you will not be changing the chemical make makeup of the food you're about to serve your family. If you must keep your microwave oven, downsize the current one to a lower powered one, and always stand at least 15 feet away or further when the microwave is on. Do not heat baby formula in a microwave, and always keep young children and infants as far away as possible when it's on. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope you think twice before you use your microwave. Imagine watching a movie without popcorn. Most of us can't. Annual consumption of popcorn in the United States exceeds one billion pounds, and microwave popcorn makers sell three billion bags of the stuff every single year. So I'd say it's time to find out what the heck are you really eating. Let's take a look at the ingredient label of a leading bag of popcorn. First, is obviously popcorn. Next, we have salt and partially hydrogenated soybean oil. Okay, that's a trans fat, the most toxic of all fats. Yikes. Wait, fish and milk. I bet you didn't know that was in your popcorn. Here's more you might not have known about your favorite snack. Microwave popcorn became common about 25 years ago. The first version of microwavable popcorn had to be stored in the refrigerator. But in 1984, a shelf-stable version was launched and became the first mass-marketed microwave popcorn. Now for the bad news. While popcorn can be a healthy whole grain snack if it's prepared in the right way, manufacturers often coat the lining of the microwave popcorn bags with chemicals that keep the oil and the other ingredients from soaking through the paper bag. The FDA warns that chemicals break down when heated into a substance called perfluorooctanoic acid, PFOA. If you can't pronounce it, you probably shouldn't be eating it. High exposure has been linked to cancer, infertility, and other health risks. Some companies are working on phasing out these chemicals in the popping bags. A second potential danger in microwave popcorn is diacetyl, the ingredient found in the fake butter flavoring. In response to the concerns regarding the risks of diacetyl exposure, a number of microwave popcorn manufacturers have discontinued using it in their products, but many experts argue that the replacement compounds are no safer. So how can you make a healthier popcorn? Well, cheer up popcorn lovers, because there's an easy way to avoid the potential hazards of the microwave popcorn bag. First step, get rid of it. 